Hello everyone, this is Displace. I wanted to provide an update to the Rogue DPS build today. I had recorded the original video a while ago, but due to real life, uh, the video was posted later than I wanted it to be. And between recording and posting, there were a few changes to Rogues that made um, some of the video obsolete. So this is gonna be a quick video today because if I make it too long, Blizzard's gonna just roll out some new changes and make it obsolete again. I do try and stay on top of things and sometimes I fail, but I wanted to thank everyone for all the comments in the previous video to allow me to make this new one. So let's get into what some of these changes are and how this impacts the rogue builds going forward for phase four. So it looks like there has been an undocumented buff to the saber slash ability for rogues, which now makes this outperform mutilate. So saber slash does weapon damage, and applies a bleed to the target. The damage portion also stacks. So the tooltip reads, each stack also increases damage done by your saber slash by 33%. Previously, this damage stack did not apply to the bleed effect, but now it looks like it does. So although I haven't tried this build yet, the community is saying that it is up to a 300 DPS increase to go saber slash. This effectively means Mutilate is dead and Saber Slash is now the king of all builds. So for the build, most of this is going to be staying exactly the same. We're still going to be going down to take four points into Seal Fate. Uh, this allows our critical strikes to add combo points. This is going to be extremely useful for the Saber Slash build because Saber Slash base only gives you one combo point compared to how Mutilate used to give you two. So adding these combo points is going to be critical. For the combat tree, the biggest change is that we are no longer putting points into improved backstab. We're going to be taking those points out and we're going to be adding one into Lightning Reflexes to increase our dodge and the other two points into Endurance, which reduces the cooldown of our Sprint and Evasion by one and a half minutes. We are still going to be going down to Blade Flurry. Uh, this is really good to take, not only because it is one of our main AoE abilities, but if you can get your hands on the Shadow Flame Sword, its on-use ability is triggered when you activate Blade Flurry. So for the runes, we'll be going with the following changes. For the head, we're going to be going with Honor Among Thieves. This is because Focus Attacks got nerfed and only gives you two energy instead of three. For the back, we're going to be going with Crimson Tempest. This applies a bleed effect to all enemies in eight yards and is a finishing move. So it doesn't have the long cooldown like Blunderbuss and doesn't have the energy cost of Fan of Knives. So this is going to be a go-to AoE ability for us. For the rings, you will want to match these with your weapons. So for example, if you're using a sword and a fist weapon, you will want one ring to be sword specialization and one ring to be fist weapon specialization. Now remember, the ring runes do not stack with racials. So if you're human, or if you have two of the same weapon, you can actually switch one of these rings out to nature specialization, which help increase your poison damage. All the other runes do remain the same from the previous build. Our rotation is going to stay the same as before. So if stealth, we're still going to use Garrett. We're going to cast Saber Slash to build up our combo points. And we're going to use Poison Knife on cooldown. We're going to cast Slice and Dice once we have five combo points. And if Slice and Dice is active, we're going to cast Invenom at five points. And if you need to DPS multiple targets, you can use Blade Flurry as well as Crimson Tempest. You will also want to update your weapons as daggers aren't the best for the Saber Slash build. For your main hand weapon, you'll want it to be slow to maximize the weapon damage. And for your offhand, you will want something fast because applying poisons is a flat percentage chance per hit. So the more you can hit, the more chances of poisons you can apply. These are the only changes you need to make to start using the Saber Slash build. I know a lot of rogues were looking to have the Saber Slash build buffed, and so this is going to be nice to give this a try and see how it goes. Hopefully, we'll have enough time to enjoy this before Blizzard makes another undocumented change.
And as always, please let me know in the comments below what you think about this video, and if you're excited about the Saber Slash build.